the last three pieces of the armour, the helmet of salvation, the sword of the spirit and prayer, all go together. Amen? They all go together. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. And watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. So take on the helmet of salvation. What's that do? It stops the fiery darts of the enemy. Those imaginings coming against you. Amen? The sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. You draw the sword. If you're in a fight, you draw the sword. Prepare yourself with the word of God in your heart. Prepare yourself with the word of God in your heart. When the enemy comes, you know, you can... Uh, one word that I... I've always used because I saw the power of it was the Lord is my shepherd I shall not want it covers everything it doesn't leave anything out <laughs> I want for nothing so when the enemy comes against me I need to get strong the Lord is my shepherd I shall not want I tell you a man come to beat me up one day and I was going to give him a hiding I was, I was set in my heart. And the Holy Spirit said to me, you can't deal with these things the way you've always done it. He said, use my word. I said, well, have a look at the guy. He looks like a gorilla. <laughs> and I said, I'm going to give you a word at least 30 seconds. Or half a second anyway. And if it doesn't work, I'm getting stuck into this fella. <laughs> but I had to obey what the Spirit of God was saying to me because he wanted to teach me the power of the word. The power of the word is the most powerful thing you have. When that man came in, he came in swinging. I said, stop. And I'm trying to think of a word. Do you think I could think of anything? But I, I had this word ingrained in me because on my vanity when I shave in the mornings is the 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Everybody knows it. So it's the first word to come to you. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Mate, it came out as quick as that, like... <laughs> you know it came out like quick draw McGraw <laughs> and this guy fell through my door and got stuck to the floor screaming like a girl and a demon started coming out of him a voice started coming out of him screaming no we've been here too long I think my god what is that he's stuck on the floor he can't do anything anymore I think that's the best punch I've ever seen <laughs> one word one word. The power in God's word. You don't understand the power in God's word. The power of God's word is so powerful. It's your spiritual weapon, but it's very, it can manifest in the natural. Powerfully. So powerfully. Take the helmet of salvation, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Prepare yourself for the word of God before the evil day, will you? It's been said that Roman army was one of the most ferocious war machines ever assembled. These soldiers were relentless, yet the only offensive weapon in the armour of a Roman foot soldier was his sword, and his life depended on how well he could use it. The word of God is your sword. Yeah. Your life depends on how well you can use it. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Yeah. Roman soldiers were so well trained to follow the orders of their commanders that they were debated to fight against any opposition. They were fiercely loyal to one another, they linked up, knowing that their lives depended on their fellow comrades. If one soldier saw another soldier being overcome by the enemy, he'd jump in and fight for his fellow soldier, regardless of the odds, until his comrade was back on his feet. That's love. Amen? Keep this in mind. Notice the last phrase of verse 18. Watching near unto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Praise God. I want to pray for some of you tonight. Thank you, Lord. Using the word thereunto shows that the main purpose for the sword of the Spirit, the word of God, is an aggressive weapon used on behalf of other saints. Oh, thank you, Lord. God's command to watch thereunto means we are to stand guard with all perseverance and supplication for each and every one of us. We're to pray for one another as Paul did when he made intercession for the Galatians. In that case, the devil was using legalism to beat down the Galatians, right down to their helmet of salvation. That's why Paul said, my little children of whom I travail in birth again until Christ be formed in you. I tell you, that scripture gives me great hope. 
it means that over and over and over again, God is listening to our prayers on behalf of each other. My life depends on you. Your life depends on me. Amen? Amen. The weapons of our warfare, they are mighty. Say, the weapons of my warfare. warfare. They are mighty in God to pull down strongholds. With them, I pull down every imagination that raises itself against the knowledge of God. Or every vain imagining against the knowledge of God. The weapons of my warfare, they are mighty in God to pull down strongholds. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Tonight we've been teaching on defensive weapons. Your aggressive weapons are the word and the name and the blood. You load your prayer up with the word, the name and the blood, you've got the most effective prayer. The Muslims wish that they knew how to pray like this. The Hindus wish that they knew how to pray like this. You know the difference between you and every other religion in the world is that you're not religious. It's a lifestyle of having Christ. But I want to tell you, they still look at you as religious people. They still look at us as religious people. But we have a God that's opened the door of repentance to us and says, repent, turn around and walk with me. Yeah. And walk with me. Mm. Praise God. You go to India and they're all down in front of the Ganges thinking they walk into the water. Once a year they can get cleansed. They throw ashes over themselves. Yeah. They beat themselves, cut themselves with knives to try to get forgiveness of sin. What have we got? A a God who sacrificed his life so that all of us could walk into eternity. Brought us back, redeemed us from a place where we're all walking to an eternal death because of what Adam did. We are forgiven. We're forgiven. Amen. Say, I'm forgiven. I'm forgiven. Glory to God. I said that anointing. I said that anointing coming down. I am forgiven. Sister, I love that song you sang the other day. That song. Oh, happy days. Oh, happy days. When Jesus was. When Jesus was. When Jesus was. He was my sailing away. I tell you, that's a wonderful song. <laughs> Praise God, the gift of salvation. Amen. Amen. Mate, that's the gospel. Learn your weapons. Study your weapons. And walk in the power of God. Walk in the power of God. You'll become little dynamos. I was trying to take a photo of my brother, my little white brother there who thinks he's black. <laughs> and I couldn't see his skin colour because of the glow on him. <laughs> Amen? Amen? That's what happens when you start to get transformed on the inside. Isn't that correct? Praise God. When you start to get transformed on the inside, you start to glow on the outside. Amen? Oh, glory to God. We've got the best news in the world. And here we are hanging on to it. Oh, Father God, give us a heart to spread this word. Amen. Praise God. I just want to pray for those who are suffering at the moment in sickness. Praise God. In fact, I'm going to open up the altar. If you want to come for prayer, I want to open up the altar. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen.